So, I almost hit another airplane while flying back from Omaha to my home airport here in Beulah, North Dakota. Here's what happened. Um, my wife and I were flying back from Omaha, Nebraska, or Blair, Nebraska to be exact, and there were some low clouds. And so I decided I was gonna fly IFR. I started flying IFR. I wasn't really an IMC. I, could, I still had ground references. I mean, I was in the clouds, but I still had ground references most of the time. And I was just flying along and the clouds cleared up. It was about a four hour flight and we were about three hours into it and we were getting pretty annoyed with all the talking on the radio. Um, when you're trying to listen to something or whatever, it's just annoying to always have to be listening and making sure they're not talking to you. We were flying along and I decided to cancel my IFR clearance. We we're no longer in the clouds and I didn't need IFR clearance anymore. And I didn't pick up flight follow. And, and that's key to the story. So I'm looking at my ADSB because I have we have ADSB in the airplane, and I believe that's a huge safety um, feature. Everyone should have ADSB in their airplane if you possibly can. And there's another airplane on a collision course with us. I sold my son's toy airplanes here to to kind of give you guys a visual. But so we had none of us are by wings, by the way. I was a high wing. He was a low wing. And so I was up here and I saw him on ADS-B and he's flying this way and he's climbing, just climbing up like this out of an airport. And I am up here and I'm descending into my home airport. Now I'm still quite a ways off, but I was at 6,500 feet starting a very slow descent to my home airport. So he's climbing, I'm descending. Now few catches I don't know how high he's climbing and I know that if I just steep steep in my descent a little bit I might be able to get under him and he'll go right over me no problem so I'm descending he's climbing and we are on a collision course going the exact same speed he was in a bonanza I was in a descending 1 and E2 so we we're going the exact same speed and we were going like this and I knew that if we kept on the same course we were going to meet right in crash and so since i saw him on my ipad that's connected to our adsb in i decided to take a slight right hand turn so that way as we went i would go right behind him that was my that was my whole theory i could just take a slight right hand turn and then we if even if we were at the same altitude when we crossed i would just sneak in right behind him and he might not ever know i was there and so that's that's what i did we're, we're, we're flying like this. I take a slight right-hand turn. Well, right as I take this right-hand turn, he takes a left-hand turn. And so now we are coming straight at each other. And I looked out my windshield and I saw him turning left. It wasn't even on the ADSB anymore. I saw him out my windshield turning left straight at me. And I, if you don't know what this feels like, I, I'm happy for you. But to have another airplane turn straight at you um, in midair is a spooky feeling you guys are both going 140 knots roughly uh, at the exact same altitude because what happened is he stopped climbing and I stopped descending and it happened to be right at the exact same altitude I mean things could not have worked out worse um, I, did, I thought he was still climbing that's why I leveled out and he's just stopped climbing and so he's turning left I'm turning right but we're still going we are still about to crash. And so I take that turn and I just yank it around as he's turning and he's turning into me. I'm thinking, man, level out, level out, level out. But he's still keeping that turn coming. And so what I do is I take that, I'd make that turn really steep and I just drop like a rock, just boom. And he comes to that left and he goes right over me and comes around and goes back to the airport that he had taken off from. And I drop like a rock, a, like a solid thousand feet. Because he was still, uh, I don't know, three miles off when I saw him taking that left turn. So when I saw him, I just dropped like a rock. And so I got down there quick. And it actually turned out it wasn't even a reportable incident because uh, we never got closer than 500 feet of each other. But it was just so unusual 
that we both happened to level out at the exact same altitude. He was climbing, I was descending, and we both said, oh, we're both going to level out. And I decided to do, you know, that's what you're supposed to do um, when you're in VFR, is give way to the right. And I just decided, I'm going to do that. Just give way to the right, and we'll be fine. He turned left. Well, when I saw him going back to the airport he took off of, I jumped on his frequency. See, that's the whole issue. I didn't know what frequency he was on because it looked to me like he took off about this certain airport. It looked to me like he was going straight to another airport based on the way he was flying. He was definitely not doing a traffic pattern. Definitely not doing a normal traffic pattern. I don't know what he was doing exactly, um, but he was flying very erratically. I don't know if he had, maybe he was going somewhere else and he had an emergency. I, I guess I'll never know. But when I saw him going back to his base airport, I called on the, the CTAF and I called his tail number because I saw him on the ADSB. And I said, are you on this frequency? And he said, yeah, what's up? I said, that was a close one. And kind of a moment of silence. And then he goes, what was a close one? And I said, I just dropped about a thousand feet, actually over a thousand feet to get out of your way. Um, so we didn't crash. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, you didn't see me at all? He's like, I, n I had no clue you were there. No clue. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah. He said, do you have ADSB? I said, yeah. My dad actually texted me right after I made that deviation. He said, what was the deviation for? Because he was watching me on ADSB. So I know the ADSB was working. Uh, but he said, I never saw you on ADSB. And I was like, wow. Wow. That could have been really bad. What if I wouldn't have seen him on the ADSB? We might have continued that collision course, the original collision course, where I was I was descending and he was ascending right at the same point and just maybe barely missed each other or maybe worse, an air-to-air -air accident. So that's the story. And I wanted to share a few things that I really I learned from that experience. So here are the things that I learned from this. Um, I'm not going to call it a near-death experience. We definitely could have died had we hit. Um, but it's like I was telling my wife and my mom and some of my friends and family who were um, kind of concerned about what happened, obviously. And I said, the chances of us actually um, hitting each other are very slim. Uh, you could be saying we're at the exact same altitude. Like, hey, Bonanza, whatever, what are you reporting for altitude? 4,000 feet. Hey, what, Cessna 182, what are you reporting for altitude? 4,000 feet. Well, first of all, that's like plus or minus, what, 50 feet? And then second of all, our altimeters, what if they weren't set to the same um, altitude? Or on and on and on, the list goes on, so many variables. Um, so even two people flying at 4,000 feet, it would be scary and you get way closer to another airplane um, in the air than you'd ever want to unless you're flying in formation. But the chances of you actually hitting each other are way less than, say, two people driving on a highway, the highway keeping them at the same altitude and just barely veering off. Like, if I saw an airplane 10 feet in front of me, as long as we both didn't shove down or pull, down, pull back at the same time, the proper procedure is to turn right both parties should always turn right. If you see an airplane in front of you or in on a collision course, both airplanes should always turn right to avoid collision. Um, in VFR flight and in any flight, if you see someone in a collision course, turn right. Um, and if every pilot knows that, that's great. Turn right, yank that thing right. as hard and as fast as you can. And, you know, theoretically, both airplanes would come together and they'd both turn right and you'd be good. No crash. Um, so the, the actual chances of a mid-air collision are pretty si slim, but to see an airplane that never saw you, never even knew you were there, um, turn right at you as if they were like trying to hit you. I know that wasn't the case, but it, that, that's what it felt like in the moment. It's like, what are you doing, dude? I'm turning right and you're turning left. It's like you're trying to hit me. Um, that's, that's a crazy experience. The first thing I learned was never rely solely on ADSB. Now, of course, I knew this. Um, that's that's something that you just people we just talk about a lot. But it, really, you get to rely on it because airplanes are so hard to see in real life, um, especially if you're even slightly above them. 
they just blend in so well to the ground scenery that um you know taro says hey there's traffic right here you know uh, atc says hey there's traffic off to your right same altitude or slightly below you and I, there's been times i've never seen it especially helicopters you know the atc will say there's a helicopter you know right below you it's like i have no clue what you're talking about because they fly so low and they just blend right into the scenery if they're above you they're easier to see but if you're flying a high wing um your view is actually limited by that wing and same with that bonanza when i when i dove down he was like right on top of me just a few hundred feet above me and he never saw me because he has a low wing he can't see below him yeah the main thing is don't rely on that adsb to be accurate he said he was looking at adsb i didn't talk to the pilot very much i just kind of called him on the radio but we were on uh, the unicom of a um somewhat busy airport so i wasn't going to just carry on conversation with him and, and discuss all the details um but i basically wanted to just let him know hey that was a close one and he was like what the second thing i learned was um never assume the other pilot sees you never assume the other pilot sees you um and this is not something that i necessarily did wrong um but it's definitely something that i'll learn from in the future I kind of assumed I would turn slightly right, he would turn slightly right, and we wouldn't even be close to each other. I kind of assumed he had ADSB, he kind of saw me the whole time, but if not, my actions would still work. It's just that if he would have seen me, his they would have worked better. He would have turned slightly right, I would have turned slightly right. Everything would have worked out perfectly. Never assume that he sees you. Like I said, we were as close as I've ever been in the air to another airplane, ever. Um, except for maybe in a pattern, but even in a pattern, like I've just, I've never been that close to another airplane and he never saw me. Never. I mean, he just, if I went to say anything to him, he probably would have went, went about his day and never even knew that he had a close call. I mean, we're talking, his life could have been over and he never knew it <laughs> kind of thing. And he just never saw me. So never rely on um on the fact that the other pilot sees you that's never a uh, it's never a guarantee especially since you don't know what channel they're on you're flying vfr you know if he's been ifr a whole different story right atc would have been vectoring us both um obviously if we're not in the clouds it's still our responsibility to, to um, not get in a crash but for vfr flying you just you never assume that they see you the third thing that I learned and it's kind of a sad one for me <laughs> to be honest because I don't like it I, I wish it wasn't the case but the third thing I learned is you really should probably do flight following um, or IFR um, on every cross country and if, you, if you're not a pilot flight following is just basically um, ATC with their radar, they'll tell you, hey, there's traffic. I don't know if it's an airplane or a bird or whatever, but we have traffic in front of you. You need to divert. Um, and so whether it's on ADSB, whether it's, it doesn't matter. If you're doing flight following, um, they, they should be able to pick it up. It's not perfect. They still, they have all these caveats. If you do flight following, you're still responsible for looking outside and on and on and on. But it is, at least you have someone watching out for you um, in case of a situation like mine. The reason I hate flight following, the reason I hate IFR flying when I'm not in the clouds is because all the radio banter. It's just on and on and on. You're talking to center. So every jet pilot is flying over you. Every commercial flight, every King Air, everything, every airplane within probably, I don't know, a lot of space. I think Minneapolis center covers like seven states or more. Um, and I'm on that frequency. So every pilot within that radius, we're talking jet pilots, we're talking um, everybody is talking on that frequency. So it's like a constant banter of chat, radio chatter. And obviously you're on certain frequencies, you're not picking up all of it. You know, I understand that you're not picking up all of it, but still it's, it's enough to be annoying. And that's why I wasn't on IFR on this trip. That's why I wasn't on flight following, you know, um, but what this, this made me realize is that, you know, had I been on flight following, I don't know how the situation would have been different necessarily, 
um, because I did see the guy. But if he would have been on flight following, um, ATC would have been like, as soon as they saw the turn, they would have seen the collision course. And I said, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. You've got another guy right there. Turn back to the where you're going, and we'll we'll call you when you, we we'll tell you when you can turn. Maybe do flight following. Maybe do IFR on these cross country flights because it really is a safety thing. And yes, it's annoying. Yes, it's frustrating to have to hear all the radio banter. But it really is a something that is very good for safety. So yeah, I hope you um, enjoyed my story. Um, this video wasn't quite all the the fancy editing or in the airplane or anything like that um, but it's just a real true story that happened to me and some safety tips that i came away with i hope you enjoyed it and stick around for the next one this has been the aviator signing off